Hello everyone, uh, I will honestly just get immediately to the chase here and say that game development is really, really boring, okay? Now, a lot of game developers say like, oh yeah, it's fun because you can uh, script and you can, you know, add your own cool little mechanics and features and then they end up like making just a copy, like a, like a liter literally like a carbon copy of like just every other game out there and it took them like five years to do so. What if we just make a game that just makes itself? Like what if we, you know, we, we just write like, you know, like a, a few lines of code, we make a bit of assets and then we just sit, tell it to, okay, just generate by yourself. And this will be done without AI, okay? Because uh, look, enough videos have been made already about like, it, this AI will uh, kill game development forever. And, and then it's like an AI that can like summon a part in Roblox like 75% of the time or something. You know, like it's just dumb stuff like that that doesn't actually work. Instead of what I want to do is I want to make a system that does not use AI, does not use some dumb external tool that none of us understand. Because let's be honest, not, not honestly, the majority of us don't even get how AI even works. We get the main idea as a user. But like as a developer, if we t if we took a look into the code, you'd be like, what the hell is this, right? So I want to make a system that will make sense for literally everyone, even you, even if you don't know code, even if you literally, if you, if you were if you were born three days ago, bro, this this is for you. And what I'm talking about here, right, is basically just making a couple assets. So for example, right, let's say we can have this big part like so, okay? We can just have this thing, which I'll just call thing one, I don't know. And then what we will do with this thing, okay, is we will make it into a model. And a model just means like, you know, it's just, it's like, a, it's like a folder for parts, kind of. And all that we need to do is we just need to duplicate this thing one, and then I'll just rename this to end pause, like so. I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it to be somewhat of a tiny cube, right? Something like this. Yeah, so basically just make it look like this, make it look like a little connector, you know? What I'll also do is I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just set the color of this thing to be red, like so. And what I'll also do is I'll make sure that it's uh, orientation indicator, meaning like, you know, where it's facing. Yeah, so right now it's facing in that direction. And so instead of what I'll do is I'll make it face forward, okay? Oh, let me just snap rotate real quick. I'm gonna make it face this way, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll take this thing, I'm gonna copy it, right? I'm gonna position it to be all the way back here at like basically the same position, right? And I guess I'll just move this a little as well. Yeah, and then I'll just uh, rename this to be start pause like so. And my idea with this, okay, is let, let me just show you real quick. Let me make a model to, okay, where everything will be the same except this thing one. Uh, let's just set it to be a different color, okay? So this one will, will be dark black. And then the other one will be white, like so. And the last thing we need is the starter model. So I'll just call the starter. I'm gonna put it over here. And I'm also going to remove its uh, start position, like so. And then I'll put all of the other models into a folder, which I will call, um, I don't know, what do we, just models, sure. And so the idea here is simple. Whenever I start the server, I want to make a loop, which is, I don't know, make it like 50 times or 100 times or whatever where it's going to pick a random model in this folder and using the start and end part it's going to attach this random part to this starter part and then we're going to do the same thing but for the brand new part so basically my idea here is that we're going to make a, a line which is going to contain like just a mix of these randomly select um i'm going to make some variables just real quick and then let's make a loop that's going to run let's say 30 times okay so equals 130 do and the idea here is simple, like, right, like I said, we're going to use these red parts and we're basically going to like click them together using these parts. And the thing that I will just do real quick is I'll set the primary part of both of these models to be their start position, okay? So model 1, start position, and model 2, start position as well. Because these will be the parts that we're going to basically like teleport to the end part of you know, whatever part we just generated. I understand this might not be making sense. I said before that like, oh yeah, if you're like three, you'll understand. This might be a little too complex, um, but I promise this is gonna make sense very soon as everything does, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select a random item inside of this folder, okay? So I'm gonna say local uh, clone thing is gonna be equal to folder get children. So we're gonna get the children. We'll say this, and then we'll also say math random from one, which is, you know, the minimum number and then the maximum number out of this random number will be the amount of items inside of this folder which we can also get by saying the folder get children and putting a hashtag in front of it which will return the number of items inside of this table what i'll do is i'll say clone thing pivot to okay uh which will require a c frame and all we want to do is we just want to pivot this thing 
to the end position of the of whatever starter is because right now starter is just starter right so i'll say starter dot and position dot c frame like so then we need to actually make this thing visible right so uh, if it's not in the workspace it will not be visible so what i think we can do is we can just make a folder real quick just so these don't spam up the folder uh we can call them spawned parts like so so yeah, then I'll just say cloned thing uh, dot parent is equal to workspace dot spawned parts. And the very last thing for us to do is we need to change what starter is, right? So I'll say starter is equal to this clone thing. And if I just run the game right now, obviously we could run into an error. Damn. Oh wait, no, hold on. No, no, I, I just realized what's going on. I just realized the issue. We forgot to set them equal to anchored, right? Okay, hold on. These are anchored. Um, These parts are also anchored. And then these parts are also anchored. Okay, good. If I run the game right now, it's still giving us this error. Invalid argument to random interval is empty. Okay, so it's saying that number two is empty. So it's saying that this is empty. And I'm so stupid, I just realized. Okay, look, can you read my code? And can you see the grand mistake, right? You see how I named it clone thing? Can you see the grand mistake that I'm making here? I forgot to clone the item. I, I, I was taking out the item itself, and then it was trying to get it again, but then it, it can't get it because we took it away. <laughs> so, okay, we're cloning it. That should fix everything. Amazing. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. So, it randomly selected these parts, right? White, black, 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 white, 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 black, white, white, blah, 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 blah. And it did that all the way up until 30, okay? If I were to give it a higher number, like 10,000, I mean, it would take a while, but... In the end, it would do it. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, that actually... Wow. That was insanely quick. So all we need to do right now, really, is just make a bunch of versions of these parts. So for example, we can make a part that goes up in an incline. We can make a part that's like a corner. We can make an incline corner. Like, we can make a part that's like a decline. Although that might go through the base plate if that's like the first option. But you see what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things that we could do with this. And I mean, honestly, like, even with the idea of a corner, we could just, you know, duplicate this. Uh, we could just call this, I don't know, model three or something, right? We can move this out of the way. And what I'm thinking we can do is we can just take this thing, which uh, it's called thing one. I don't, I guess we just, I don't know. There's no need to change it at this point. I'll just move it here, extend it here, rotate it over here. I'll just position it to be somewhat, yeah, just around here. Okay, awesome. There we go. And then the only change here is just to take this, you know, uh, end position, rotate it around, and then just move it to the middle. And yeah, I mean, that should be basically it, I think. Let me, let me just ensure that it's actually in the middle. Uh, because if it's not in the middle, then it's just gonna look kind of weird. Okay, it's very stupid how it's not exactly in the middle, but I guess let me just change the snapping. Okay, sure, fine. Now, this should be in the middle. And then we could just make another version of that, but instead, instead of going this direction, it goes the other direction. So yeah, just take this thing one, move it over here, right? And then take the end position, rotate it around like so, and then just move it all the way here. Um, and that should, should be, yeah, that should be good. And just a small thing, I did make these a bit shorter just because I feel like they're, I don't know, they're like too long. And I guess because we have a white one and a black one, I'll also make this one white as well. And okay, so I just spent a bit of time uh, making, you know, the extra stuff. But what we have right now is we have, you know, these things. We have a right corner and a left corner, and we have one incline. And so really all we need to do right now is, uh, I guess we just take these models and put them inside of replicated storage, just so they don't actually show up in the game. And then we just need to change the variable here. So game, replicated storage, wait for child, uh, models. Yeah, okay, there we go. And yeah. I mean, hopefully this works. <laughs> if I run the game right now, then yeah, yeah, that's that's literally perfect. And honestly, right now I'm thinking, you know what we could do? Uh, once it's done looping, we could just take the last part, which will be equal to starter, right? And we can just say workspace dot spawn location dot position equals to starter primary part. Or wait, no, primary part is the start part, right? Because I want it to be at the very end of the part. So let's say starter uh dots and position like so yeah there we go so what that's gonna do now is it should end pause dot position okay that's annoying but now it should spawn us at the very top yeah there we go awesome all right so i just wrote a quick script that should actually bump up our speed because that was incredibly slow we have just created a game 
that is different every single time that you run it. Now you might notice that there are a bit of issues, like for example if you look there in that direction you can see that you know some parts are actually overlapping together, which is a problem. Like what's going on is that like it's just it's, it's making like the corners, right? But like like by chance what you could do is you can get a corner that just goes back into itself, right? So like chance wise that's absolutely possible and so that's why it's giving that you know mistake and please okay good but you know that aside and actually it's over here so we can actually see it more closer yeah you can see it's like they're like fighting over who gets to stay on top because this is intersecting this is intersecting it's just a whole mess right now and i'm sure there is a way to fix this like there has to be but like honestly um so far i i mean yeah we've just made an amazing parkour game that you can sell on roblox for like I don't know, 500 Robux or just however much games are right now. Like honestly, you can just make make this into a game, right? Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. How far, jeez. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, and there we, there, there it goes. That's actually insane. I mean, I know I said 10,000, but like, that was, that was a lot. And you know what something I actually want to try out? Clone thing dot touched. And then I also guess no game is finalized without a user interface or whatever. So honestly, we could just add some text or something. Let's just scale the size. Yeah, we could just add like a bit of text that can just be on the very top like so. Make it scaled, remove the transparency, make it say like reach the bottom exclamation point. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and so now if I actually run the game, beautiful. Look at this. Oh damn, I'm falling. But yeah, with just a few lines of code and just a very few like models right which aren't even custom made all i'm using here are just default roblox parts right so what i just did here is i made a game that has a gameplay loop it has an actual goal and objective which is actually given to you you know via this amazing beautiful text and it's actually long enough and has enough you know like variety i guess to the point where it's not really that boring and when i say variety i mean like it's random every time. Like, I know I made this like 10,000 parts, so it is very long. But honestly, what you could do is you could just make like a mini game version of this where, like, you know, I don't know, maybe like every 10 minutes, it, um, like, you know, it makes like a, like a very, sm like, it makes like a smaller maze. And then whenever a player reaches the bottom, they get like rewarded with like cash or whatever that they can then spend on like cosmetics or power ups or something. And then every 10 minutes, the server just resets the maze. So it's just like a, a brand new random maze. And then the maze could also have like different tricks. Like maybe I could I could make a part that has like a kill brick on it. And then whenever you step on the kill brick, you end up dying. Like like honestly, you know what? That's actually such a fire idea. Let me do that right now. Okay, give me a second. Wait, duplicate. We can move it over here. I'll just name this, I don't know, model six, sure. And yeah, we can take thing one. We can duplicate it. We can make it a lot, you know, smaller than it is right now. Yeah, make it red, make it neon, like so. And then just put a script inside of it that just basically says, you know, whenever it gets touched, uh, what we could do, you know, we get the hit, we'll say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid, meaning it's a player, then hit dot parents dot humanoid dot health is equal to zero. And we just take this kill break and we just, I don't know, like <laughs> just duplicate it around like so. Yeah, amazing. And then we just take these models, just move them back into, you know, replicated storage. And so now if I actually play the game, obviously we don't have like their- Oh my god. Oh right, I'm, I'm incredibly quick, I forgot. Okay, maybe I should have made that a bit longer. But you see now, we have actual challenges, okay, which I could just skip. But look, honestly though, this is, this is good, right? The, the fact that we can skip stuff, right? I don't know, it just makes it more fun. It, it feels like you're breaking the rules of the game, kind of, which always just feels very nice, right? And we just got the same thing. How many times? One, two, three, four four times in a row and how, how much how much options are there six options so if there's six items and we get the same one four times in a row what's the what's the chance on that someone has to calculate that but yeah so like i said just with a couple lines of code we just made a game which actually has you know some threats now that i just added them okay it works good it has an objective it has a gameplay loop um again yeah sure it might be lacking some stuff but look as i was saying you know it is i guess lacking some stuff um like, like, I don't know, reaching, reach the bottom, for example. Like, like it's telling you to do that. But, like, if you actually reach the bottom, there's not much you can get. I mean, this is very easily, like, fixable. Like, what, what I could do right now is I could just make the base plate, like, a lot smaller than it actually is. Because, I don't know, I feel like, you know, making it too big would just be a little unfair of the whole... It's, it's, it's just going to make it a lot easier to actually reach the bottom. Yeah, and we could just take this starter part. We could just make it, um, I don't know, like, green. Yeah, there we go, green, you know, make it neon. And then we could just give every single player, like, a value, which, like, determines how many times they've actually, you know, reached the bottom. Yeah, and so I just made a quick system which basically gives every single player, like, on the leaderboard, this value of wins, which by default will be zero. And so then what we could just do is whenever the player touches, um, you know, the starter um, part, 
Yeah, I could just make a script, which um, I'll just I'll just borrow the script from the kill brick. Yeah, so we could just copy it over here, but instead of setting the health to zero, we can just say like, oh yeah, game dot players uh, get player from character, and we'll say hit dot parent dot leader stats dot wins dot value plus equals one. So if by chance someone did happen to actually reach the bottom, right? Then whenever they press it, amazing! Wow, they just have. It's a lot of wins because my whole body's pressing against it, which um, it, it probably should be something we could fix. But I mean, honestly, if you reach the bottom, I don't just, I don't know, get however many wins you want, honestly. That doesn't matter. And, you know, I could go on and on and on about, like, the amount of stuff we can add, but hopefully you already see the idea here. Like, you see the, the potential, you see, like, this, the amount of stuff we could add. And yeah, 10,000 is like, wow. Like I said, we're just with a couple lines of code. Like, sure, I added some more to, you know, like, make it a little less boring. But, like, we just made this game it's like a, it's like a little string like it looks like strings from this angle yeah look it's still going what the hell and i see more in the distance and more and more and more and more and yeah it's not it's just not stopping oh my god i guess um i don't really have anything to prove with this video like like this this isn't a serious message where i'm saying like oh yeah everyone just start doing this and instead of like making games because yeah look if every single game started having randomized parts that would get very boring very quickly but like i said you know if you are a developer or you want to be a developer like this actually would be an interesting thing that you could do and we we have just reached it okay all right you know what maybe maybe instead of ten thousand, maybe we could tone it down a little bit not by a lot <laughs> let's let's do five thousand five thousand will be a good number yeah let's do that but i do hope that you can see like just again like i said i keep repeating this but like the amount of things that you can honestly do just with some scripting is insane like that actually turned out to be somewhat fun like obviously there's so much more i could add and there's so much you know more polishing that i could do um but i will release this as an actual game uh, i will put the link in the description and the pinned comment so that you can go play it with you know other people and everything and i will say as well that uh if you are a fan of mine and like you really like my teaching style you know obviously like the, the stuff that I, sh that I just showed you right now is just like just blew your head like impressed you a lot like one, one million times or whatever i do have a course and it is on sale right now it's it's fifth like 50 percent off that, that that's a lot i think the sale does end in around at the time of the video it should be like two or three days or something so if you have been looking at the course it's ha it's 50 percent off for like a couple days um so do go check that out link is also in the description and the pinned comment but yeah i mean um if you have any ideas of like just stuff that i could add to this game uh do let me know i'm not gonna like keep working on this like this isn't gonna be like a like an actual full-on live service game or whatever but like you know just if, if right now like while i while i showed you that if you got any cool ideas of like oh yeah oh yeah like you know maybe maybe you could add like a little zone that like uh, slows you down maybe you could like have like npcs um that like fight you like on the maze or maybe you could add a feature where the player has like uh, a double jump so that they can you know escape death or like uh, just something like that like just cool stuff that would make this game a lot more fun i want you to comment them down i get more comments you get to be more creative people can go to the comments and just read a bunch of cool ideas which will, which will just make their brain think for games and just stuff in general which is oft always really good so literally all of us win right so just go do that right now and so as always we're back to basics kind of <laughs> thank you for watching